Hello students, welcome to lecture 27 of the online course on nanophotonics plus phonics and metamaterials. Today's lecture will be on tunable photonic metamaterial based devices. So, this is the lecture outline. We will first talk about introduction to reconfigurable metamaterials. Then we will take some examples of uh, electro optical metamaterials and phase change metamaterials. So, first of all, we have seen metamaterials in our previous lectures and we have seen that metamaterials show promising and novel methods for manipulating optical waves in terahertz, visible and infrared spectrum. Now, these metamaterials can be of different types that we have seen previously, double positive, single negative and uh, also they can give negative refractive index, negative uh, epsilon near 0, different effects can be obtained from metamaterials. Now, what are the applications? The applications are typically in the areas of uh, high resolution imaging, nonlinear optics, radiation control, holography, optical communication and so on. Now, if you think of the design of the metamaterials, it is basically based on the design of the unit cell that is meta atom. Now, in most of the cases, the practical applications becomes limited because once you fabricate this meta material, you cannot change it. Okay? So, in that case, uh, the resonance typically that you obtain from a meta material is a narrow band resonance and that comes from the resonating nature of the constituent microstructures or nanostructures whatever depending on the frequency range you are talking about. Now, what is important is to have a reconfigurable metamaterial. By reconfigurable it means that you can put some external stimuli and you should be in a position to change the resonance wavelength without going through the fabrication of the device again. So, that brings us to an interesting topic of uh, reconfigurable metamaterials. So, here is a schematic as you can show. So, at the bottom there is a metamaterial and then there is a kind of 2D material, it may be graphene or any other material, which is close to this particular metamaterial that you have fabricated. And there can be a voltage biasing on this uh, 2D material and that will change the surrounding medium permittivity of these meta atoms. And that can give rise to some kind of dynamic effect which will change the response of this particular meta material at a given voltage. So, if you change the voltage, the response will also change and that is how the same meta material will be able to provide you different different responses depending on the tuning of the bias voltage that you are applying. So, this is the base main concept of reconfigurable meta material. It means the same meta material can be used for different applications. You do not need to undergo the fabrication process again. You can reuse the same meta material by reconfiguring it by setting up a specific voltage bias voltage depending on your requirement. Now, so we are looking for some materials which have got some changeable properties or some reconfigurable structures where mechanically you can change some you know structure and then when I say mechanically these are basically MEMS kind of uh, arrangement micro electromechanical systems or NEMS kind of arrangement. Okay? So, there you can achieve some kind of tuning of the optical properties of these meta materials. Now, here as I mentioned that one way is to use graphene or other 2D materials. Okay? Then you can use semiconductors, you can use phase changing materials like vanadium dioxide or GST, gallium, tin, tellurium. Okay, you can use liquid crystals, you can use different kind of MEMS structured metamaterials. So, these are all used for emerging applications in advanced optics and photonics and the operating range of frequencies can be tuned between terahertz to visible. And these developments are important both for fundamental optical physics and their applications in nonlinear nanophotonics and say super resolution imaging and so on. 
So, we will take an example of reconfigurable metamaterial and discuss it in more details. So, here uh, we understood that reconfigurable metamaterials they offer a unique opportunity to design and vary the structure enabling a desired response function and a convenient mechanism for tunability. Now, that is something very important that convenient mechanism for tunability. If there is a voltage requirement which comes down to kilo volt or several hundreds or thousands of volts, then it is a impractical design. You will not be using a metamaterial along with such high voltage source. Okay, so, you have to think of some mechanism where you know sub 5 volt or say few tens of volts that is also a bit high, but still manageable. So, that kind of external stimulus should be able to bring the tunability. The other kind of tunability can be you know from the case where you know you have a metamaterial lattice and you are able to you know dislocate the lattice by some means. Okay? So, the range of tunability for a given property can be much broader in metamaterials than in natural materials that we understood because here you have the control over the meta atom design and it period periodicity or the lattice kind of uh, arrangement. So, when you see the lattice effects in metamaterial, they can be actually made much stronger through higher efficiency of uh, collective effects in the lattice and that can be achieved by doing appropriate design. So, a reconfigurable, a reconfigurable uh, metamaterial based on uh, resonant elements can be suitable for providing artificial magnetism such as uh, split string resonator array that you have already seen. So, we can actually start with this kind of a simple uh, metamaterial design and we can see here that you know alternative uh, layers can be you know they can be staggered and they can be the lattice can be slightly shifted. So, here you can see the structure carefully that you know the lattice period is basically A and uh, the gap between the two planes or the two layer is B and the amount of shift is given as uh, delta A. Okay? And these are the coordinate system that has been marked. So, what you see here this is basically a reconfigurable metamaterial by shifting the lattice. Okay? So, in this case you are basically shifting the metamolecular plane. So, you can call this one plane as a metamolecular plane okay? or simply you can call meta atom plane. Okay? They, they do not make much difference how do you call them, but what is main important thing here is that you are basically changing the lattice orientation and this is where metamaterial field becomes so cool. Because in natural materials, the lattice positions are fixed, you will not be able to alter them. Right? But here you can actually design the matter atom on like uh, depending on your need and then you are also able to move their lattice positions to tune, to fine tune their optical response. Now, what happens when uh, you do this? When, when the lattice positions are shifted? the effect of mutual coupling is basically enhanced and that enhances dramatically when you do the shift and you know bring them closer to each other in one way or the other okay and it can show you a very high efficiency lattice tuning so for sufficiently dense arrays the interaction between such elements differs consider considerably from a dipole approximation so, here you can always think of multipoles which are interacting because the interaction becomes very strong and only dipole approximation will not be able to consider all the effects. So, there are multipolar, um, multipole means you know quadrupole, octopole and so on. They are also interacting with each other. So, that actually gives you uh, the coupling and then there is a specific process that can be developed to calculate what is the effective permittivity of this material. So, when you find finally want to know the optical response, you need to find out what is the effective permittivity, effective permittivity of a particular material. Now, if all the characteristic dimensions such as lattice constants, 
element size are considered to be much smaller than the wavelength of light that is interacting with. A regular lattice of this kind of elements can be described by its effective permeability which is mu and that is also a function of the frequency. So, you can take it as 1 minus a omega square over omega square minus omega r square minus plus i gamma omega. So, here what is this uh, resonance frequency? Okay, this should be omega r. Okay, so the resonance frequency omega r is basically omega naught epsilon sorry l sigma over l plus mu mu naught nu s square by 3 l to the power minus half. So, what are these terms? So, if you can see here that the resonance frequency of individual element okay which is determined by its geometry that is where the your design comes into the picture their concentration as well as their arrangement so all these things will decide what is omega naught and l is the self inductance okay s is the effective cross section of these elements nu is the concentration and r is the radius of the loop so these are the structural parameters that goes into this formula to decide what is the resonance frequency okay now with that you can also see that resonance frequency is determined by the mutual interaction between the elements and which is which in most practically uh, realizable cases can be defined as l sigma now what is l sigma that is basically l plus mu naught r sigma so, this sigma is the lattice sum that actually tells you the sum over all the points lattice points on which these elements are present. Okay? So, here the lattice sum sigma can be calculated for a given geometry of elements and their arrangement through the mutual inductance. So, that gives you a way to calculate the permeability. Now, by means of a periodic lateral displacement of layers in the x y plane. So, here is the x y plane you can see. So, you are actually doing the shifting in the lateral directions. So, you can actually shift these resonators either along x or along y or along both x and y. Okay? And the amount of shift is basically delta lambda okay? and delta lambda can be uh, given as you know delta not delta lambda delta a. Okay, and delta A per uh, each B distance that is the separation between the two layers okay, that can be the way to represent this particular shift. And when you see this and because of this shift if you plot the theoretical shift in the resonance frequency. So, the continuous line shows you know uh, the shift it says continuous shif shift and the solid um, so this one the dashed line the blue dashed line that you are seeing is basically for continuous uh, lattice shift strategy so you are just sliding it continuously and uh, the staggered one the solid one okay is for the staggered uh, lattice shift that means you are basically shifting it in a staggered fashion so how it happens? So, when you actually move the mutual uh, the shifting will actually take the resonator away from the you know axis. So, initially they were all aligned you can assume and then you are sliding one of this intermediate layer. So, that actually moves out. Okay? So, this decreases the overall mutual inductance in the system and that will when L reduces there will be gradual increase in the resonant frequency and that is what you are able to see that the resonant frequency which is normalized to omega naught is basically increasing as your shift is increasing. And then when the shift is uh, half of the lattice period okay, it achieves the maximum value and then it will again follow the same pattern because it will just be repeating. Okay. So, clearly any further shift will be equivalent to you know uh, the smaller shift values until the lattice exactly reproduces itself 
for a shift by A. That is clearly understood that any shift by an amount of A will actually get back to the original position. right? So, you can only consider a shift up to 0.5 A. So, what you have seen here is that you know because of this kind of shift the resonance of the medium has actually moved across the single frequency and that will bring a dramatic change in the reflection and the transmission characteristics of this metamaterial. So, here you can see the calculated transmission curve the one in blue okay, and the reflection curve is in red. So, this is calculated through a metamaterial slab which is one wavelength thick and it is dependent on the lattice shift that is staggered at omega equals 0.96 omega naught. Okay? So, with uh, staggered lattice shift you can see the reflectance and transmittance can be tuned. Okay? So, this is something very very interesting as you can uh, clearly see that if from 0 to 1 you can switch. So, what happens to transmission? The opposite thing, opposite trend happens in reflection. So, the calculation here is uh, basically shown for 5 cross 1 cross 130 elements. So, that is the number of elements you have considered and you have also taken plane wave excitation. Okay? And this gives you the magnetic field that is below this finite metamaterial slab and with the shift okay, you can see the curves from left to right they correspond to a lattice shift of uh, 0 to 0 0.5 a. So, you can see you can dramatically shift the resonance frequency okay, by doing this kind of shift. So, this was based on uh, numerical calculation or numerical simulation. You can also do experiments and see the same effect. So, these are basically the experimental uh, transmission spectrum of a waveguide with this kind of metamaterial slab uh, where you can tune the shift. So, this is the shift for 0, 0 0.2 a, 0 0.3 a, 0.4 a and 0.5 a okay? and you can see how you are able to tune it. Okay? So, that is how you can do the same metamaterial can be reconfigured to resonate at a different resonance frequency. So, that makes it a reconfigurable metamaterial. Now, this kind of shifting of the lattice may be tricky when you are trying to do it in real time because uh, you know there, there has to be some kind of arrangement to move these uh, planes away and put them back or control that particular shift. So, that, that is also possible by some kind of uh, mechanical tuning of these shifts. There are other methods of uh, tuning as well which are more popular that is giving rise to electro optical metamaterials. So, here we are basically looking at a terahertz metamaterial modulator which is fabricated on a semiconductor substrate. Okay? So, this is not the actual diagram this is just a depiction of a schematic. Okay. So, here uh, the tuning is controlled by injection and depletion of carriers in response to electrical bias. Okay. So, when you apply positive bias you can apply attract more electrons. So, that will be like injection of carriers. So, the conductivity changes that changes the permittivity okay, of the underlying semiconductor region and then you change the optical response to it. So, and if you apply the opposite bias there will be depletion of carriers and that affects the optical response. So, these are examples of active meta device which are capable of efficient real time control of radiation with electrical signals. Okay? And these were first designed for the terahertz part of the spectrum. So, here is an example of uh, meta material elements of period 50 micron and they are actually forming a 5 cross 5 okay, millimeter square planar array. Okay. So, overall dimension is 5 mm by 5 mm. Okay. So, this kind of a structure you can each each pattern the period is actually 50 micron. 
and these elements are all connected together through a metallic wire that you can see here there is a wire running okay and uh, these actually serve as short key gates okay and uh, when there is a voltage applied between the short key and the ohmic contact that controls the substrate carrier charge density near the split gaps okay and that helps you in the tuning of the resonance as i mentioned here so an electrical signal when it will be applied affects the high frequency conductivity of the substrate in the critical areas near these uh, metamolecules mainly here in the gap region okay and that actually gives rise to the change in the optical properties now mind here that the orientation of the incident terahertz radiation is shown here so the wave incident along this k vector then the magnetic field is polarized like this and the electric field is polarized in this particular direction now here is the dimension and actual geometry of the meta atom that can be used for that terahertz meta material switch or modulator whatever way you can use it so here are the dimensions this side is 36 micron the gap is only 2 micron okay the width of this region is 10 micron and this width is 4 micron and you can also make a uh, equivalent circuit model for this meta material element okay so the loop coils can be you know uh, designed as a inductor the gap can be modeled as a capacitor and the ohmic loss in this particular metallic structure can be modeled as a resistive element right so this is how typically you do okay so and there is another one this one the dashed variable capacitor which is rd and this corresponds to the loss due to the substrate free carrier absorption within the split gap and this is something can be tuned okay and the structure has been designed to enable voltage control of the conductivity of the substrate at this split gaps okay thereby controlling the terahertz transmission right so if you look here these gaps play a very important role now the substrate now if you look at the substrate the substrate actually consists of one micron thick n type gallium arsenide okay which has got a free electron density of 1.9 into 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube okay and that is grown on a semi insulating that is si semi insulating gallium arsenide wafer and this is done by molecular beam epitaxy method so we'll look into this method towards the end of this course right now you just know about this method that is being used to grow this okay the ohmic contact is fabricated by electron beam deposition of 20 nanometer of nickel 20 nanometer of germanium and 150 nanometer of gold in sequence followed by rapid thermal annealing at 350 degree centigrade for one minute in nitrogen atmosphere so this is the you know method of fabricating this particular uh, ohmic contact the planar electric uh, resonator array is fabricated using conventional photolithography so that is how you actually made that uh, periodic patterns okay and then you have done electron beam deposition of 10 nanometer thick addition layer of titanium on the gallium arsenide substrate followed by 200 nanometer of gold so this gold is basically patterned using photolithography to give you the desired structure of the matter material that you are seeing here now this is the experimental setup okay so the experimental configuration for the terahertz transmission measurement so this is your device that has been fabricated and this will be the short key contact this will be the ohmic contact you are applying a bias okay across it and you know it was conducted for normal incidents where the terahertz uh, magnetic fields they were lying in plane and here you can see that the electric field can be either you know perpendicular or parallel to the split caps okay and the connecting wire so there are two ways of having the electric field polarized one can be perpendicular to the gap or parallel to the gap now let's assume 
a reverse bias gate voltage of 16 volt is applied to the device and the terahertz electric field is uh, polarized perpendicular to the connecting wires okay so if you remember the connecting wires yeah those are connecting the different meta um, atoms or meta molecules okay so the electric field is considered to be perpendicular to that and here the time domain um, waveforms in black these are actually showing the incident and the transmitted terahertz pulses so the wires which are connecting the individual electric resonators they are actually providing electrical conductivity or electrical connectivity to the gate okay the finite element method simulation that you have done it shows that the electric field is strongly concentrated at the split gap so this is where the electric field is mainly concentrated okay in the gap okay and there is no significant current flowing along the connecting wire so e this is basically the plot of surface current density for that metamaterial element so this is the connecting wire again okay and here you can see the current is basically flowing like this in one loop and then like this opposite direction in another loop okay so what 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 about the current flowing here that's very very minimal okay so you can say that no significant surface current is flowing along this correct connecting metallic wires between the electric resonators at the resonance frequency of 0 0.72 terahertz now another important thing is that the two inductive loops that you see here they are oppositely wound so one current goes in this direction okay and another kind goes along this direction okay so they are basically oppositely one so you will see no response magnetic response from this so you'll only get a uh, net electric response from this kind of metamaterials now for the voltage controlled uh, metamaterial device so this is the device that could, as you can see this is the short key contact these are the connecting wires and these are the elements okay and at 16 volt reverse gate bias okay this particular plot shows you the transmission for the three different cases now what are those three cases the blue curve that you see here it is basically the structure that is fabricated on an gallium arsenide substrate the red one is basically the same structure fabricated on that semi insulating gallium arsenide substrate and then the black dust curve that you see here okay it is basically the simulated version of the transmission curve now obviously in simulation you will see that all the you know uh, elements are perfectly of the same size the periodicity is uniform that is where the resonance is much more sharper you get a higher q when you actually get a simulated transmission spectrum but in the case of uh, experiment fabricated devices the q factor are like little uh, lower because the peaks are or the dips that you can see here are wider and the inset here shows the photograph of the individual resonating elements the connecting wires and the contact pad which form the short key uh, gate of this metamaterial device now after that you can also calculate what is the real part of the dielectric constant of that particular device so for the case of n gallium arsenide this is the blue curve okay and silicon uh, the red one is basically the um, semi insulating uh, gallium arsenide okay the simulation part is not shown here so how does this gives us uh, tuning that let us see by applying different voltage biases so those are the cases where we have seen what happens at 16 volt of reverse biasing so now let us apply different different uh, bias voltages and measure the transmission as well as uh, the uh, dielectric permittivity so here is a figure that shows the switching performance of the active terahertz metamaterial uh, device as a function of gate bias voltage so here the polarization of the terahertz electric field is considered to be uh, perpendicular to the connecting wires so these are the connecting wires and these are the electric field polarization direction so this figure shows you the transmission which is frequency dependent transmission 
uh, at different voltage levels. So, these are the different voltage levels and if you see why it has changed, you can actually see that you know this is how the permittivity changes. So, at certain frequency range you can also see that this metal material is giving behaving like a metal, the real part of the dielectric becomes negative. Okay? And those are the cases where the transmission significantly drops because metal will be mostly reflective. In other cases, it does go well. Okay? Again, when this part goes negative, the transmission again drops. This is just a correlation, but main point that I want to highlight here is that it, you are able to tune the transmission characteristics because you are able to tune the dielectric permittivity of this effective dielectric permittivity of this metamaterial structure. Now, if you see the difference between 0 volt and 16 volt of the same structure without the metamaterials or with the metamaterials removed, you will see that there is no difference. So, there is no noticeable difference in the transmission curve. It means the main uh, tunability is coming from this metamaterial structure. Okay. So, in both cases uh, electric field patterns are shown here. Okay. So, these are again those connecting wires, only thing that is missing is this metamaterial uh, elements. Now, if you repeat the same experiment, when the electric field is considered to be parallel of the connecting wires, you see the tunability is not that drastically different. So, you actually get more tunability when the electric field is uh, perpendicular to this gap. Okay, of the or of the split gap. So here you see the tunability is much smaller as compared to the previous case, and similarly the real part of the dielectric constant is also uh, less tunable. Okay, and this is the case where you are redoing the experiment between uh, calculation between zero volt and sixteen volt, and you see no difference when the meta material elements are not present. Okay, so with that net. So, this quickly gives us an overview that we can use the electrical biasing to get charge carriers below your uh, split gap and you are able to change the capacitance and that actually change the resonance frequency that changes the effective permittivity and that is how the overall effect of this metamaterial can be tuned. There are other types of metamaterials which are reconfigurable that is based on uh, different kind of phase change materials. So, we will look into those kind of uh, metamaterial structures now. So, a radical change in the arrangement of atoms is basically called a structural phase change or you can simply call a phase change or phase transition. Now, phase change functionality of semiconductor um, chalcogenide plus has been used for decades in optical compactive discs that is CD okay, or DVDs where the rewritable memory function is basically underpinned by a transition from amorphous to crystalline phase. Okay. So, these are basically concepts from uh, material science, okay, but they are very important to make uh, optical storage and devices. So, in material science polymorphism is basically a property where you know a solid material can exist in more than one crystal structure okay so polymorphism is basically a form of uh, isomerism so any crystalline material can exhibit this particular phenomena so when we discuss about phase change functionality in uh, polymorphic materials okay that can give a way to achieve nanoscale optical and plasmonic switching devices that can be fast and they will require very less energy to activate. And this is what we are looking for, we are actually looking for um, you know fast and quick tuning uh, options. So, depending on the regime of uh, stimulation and confinement of the active medium, phase change can be either reversible or irreversible. So, let us look into one such uh, particular device. So, here what is shown? You have got a 
uh, gold split ring resonator array which has been lithographically fabricated on a VO2 vanadium dioxide film that is on a alumina substrate okay? and uh, the thickness of the vanadium dioxide film is 90 nanometer and you can apply you now current between these uh, two electrodes that you see here okay? and you can have illumination in this particular direction and there will be change in the optical transmission spectrum. So, the electrodes that you see here they are attached allowing in plane current voltage relation transport and the device is basically mounted on a temperature control stage. Now, VO2 will change its phase from a insulating to metal depending on the temperature. So, the transition temperature is typically 68 degrees that we will see quickly. Okay. So, here we understand that VO2 is basically a correlated electron material that exhibits an insulator to metal phase transition and this can be activated thermally, electrically or optically. So, what happens when it is in insulating state phase? Uh, so, this is the case when you know the VO2 is an insulator. So, it is typically the low temperature phase of VO2. You see the real part is uh, the dielectric constants real part is positive and the imaginary part is negative sorry is 0. So, this is like a typical you know insulator and after the transition phase transition that is at high temperature VO2 goes into metallic stage. So, there you can see that the real part is basically negative. So, it behaves like metal and it is also a lossy metal. So, there is a loss associated. So, the same material can behave like an insulator before the transition phase transition temperature and it can behave like a metal beyond the phase transition temperature. So, VO2 basically shows a phase transition of a percolative nature in which 5 to 10 nanometer uh, metallic puddles emerge and grow in the insulating host. Okay. So, this is how it is like you know this is how the phase transition take place. Uh, it has attracted considerable attention as an active medium for hybrid uh, metamaterial structures. Hybridizing uh, vanadium dioxide with metamaterial shows around 20 percent temperature activated tuning in the transmission spectrum within the terahertz range that is pretty good 20 percent tuning capability and a form of electrically activated memory function and uh, persistent frequency tuning of a metamaterial can be obtained which allows lasting modification of its response by using uh, simultaneous stimulus have also been demonstrated. So, all these demonstration of hybrid VO2 meta devices they have been done in the terahertz range. So, this insulated to metal transition that happens in VO2 is highly hysteretic and exhibits memory effects. So, you can see here that um, this is the temperature scale and this is the DC resistance scale. Okay. So, this shows the simultaneous DC transport and uh, far infrared probing. So, this is also giving you the split ring resonator resonance frequency okay, of this uh, of a meta material where VO2 has been used as a you know supporting material and that goes through the phase transition. So, this is the axis where uh, temperature is uh, increasing. So, you can start like this and you can go increase increase and this this particular vertical line the dashed line that you see here this is basically the phase transition point. So, beyond which VO2 will change from insulated to metal. Okay. So, this phase transition also affects the dielectric properties of the VO2 in a specific way. So, uh, at the onset of this transition electronic correlations acting in 
concert with the spatial inhomogeneity of VO2 create a rapidly divergent permittivity. So, here you see the DC resistance significantly you know drops okay. and this is how it creates a kind of uh, hysteresis because when you come back from this point it does not follow the same path rather it, it, it follows like this and then it goes back here. Okay. So, this is the hysteresis. So, this the red one is the heating cycle and the blue one is the cooling cycle. So, along the red line it will when you heat it this is how the DC conductive or DC resistance will change. These circles are basically giving you the resonance frequency you can see here terahertz resonance. The red circles are for heating cycle blue circles are for cooling cycles okay and this is the region where there is some limit of optical detection because of the fundamental limitations so you do not have any other detection below this area that's why there are no measurement taken below this but here what what you can see that you know when the conduct when the resistance significantly drops okay this there will be change in the VO2 permittivity. Okay. So, this when VO2 permittivity increases, this increases the capacitance and when the capacitance will uh, increase, the resonance frequency will decrease. So, this is the reason why you are seeing the drop in the resonance frequency. So, this is the frequency scale, the fre resonance frequency drops when this transition progresses. Now, here is another um, plot which also tells you about the heating cycle okay so at room temperature you can see this is basically the okay this is the resonance frequency okay and this is the transmission graph so here you can see that uh, at room temperature that is the black curve 300.93 kelvin you see the black curve it has got a um, dip here so the resonance is around 1.65 terahertz Okay, and as you keep on increasing the temperature of the VO2, okay, so in that case, what is happening? You are increasing the temperature, so you are moving along the heating line, and you see the resonance frequency is reducing, right? And this is what you see here. So, as the dielectric constant of the VO2 increases with temperature, the resonance frequency redshifts. Okay. The frequency decreases means wavelength will go towards larger wavelength. So, it is called a redshift and the amount of redshift is as much as 20 percent and which is pretty pretty good. Okay. So, we show that this metamaterial response tuning persists when accomplished via short current pulses. So, you can send short current pulses and that will do this kind of temperature heating Oh, so, VO2 VO heating will take place and you can actually change the transmission spectrum. So, here as I mentioned we have shown the heating cycle, but it was actually done uh, by performing the experiment over the con complete temperature cycle that is you start with 300, you go to 350 and then you go back to 300 again okay, with a temperature stage on which the sample, the VO2 sample along with the matter material was mounted. So, here the main objective was to tell you that there are ways of making your metamaterial devices actively tunable. That means, you actually fabricate your metamaterial, but then you put it on some material where with some external stimulus like current or heat or optically you are able to change its property and that change in the property will affect the resonance of the meta materials and why that will happen because the meta materials if you look for some you know gaps like capacitance in a split ring resonator okay the capacitance basically depends on the permittivity of the material that is in that gap so, those kind of thing actually helps you. So, if you are able to change the permittivity by keeping the area and the uh, th thickness or the gap same, you are actually able to change the capacitance and once you are able to change the capacitance, you can change the resonance frequency. So, this is the way you can actively tune the resonance of the 
metamaterials and that makes your metamaterial reconfigurable. So, with that we will stop here and in the le next lecture we will start discussing about meta surfaces and frequency selective surfaces. So, if you have got any queries on this particular lecture, you can drop an email to me at the, this particular email address mentioning the lecture slide as well as MOOC on the subject line. Thank you. Thank you.